Reviewers are raving about the MateBook X Pro from Huawei. The Verge, for example, doesn't mince words when it simply calls it the best laptop. But does it really live up to all of this hype? Stick around and find out. The MateBook X Pro sells in just two configurations. There's a top spec model, which is the one I'm reviewing, that comes with an i7-8550U processor, 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce MX150 dedicated GPU. And all of that sells for just $1749 Canadian, or $1499 US. There's a lower spec model that comes with an i5-8250U, a 256GB SSD, 8GB of RAM, and no dedicated GPU, and that model sells for just $1499 Canadian, or $1199 US. To get a sense for how exciting those prices really are, let's take a look at another laptop in the same class, the Dell XPS 13. To get an XPS 13 with the same specs as the i5 MateBook, you're going to have to spend $1849 Canadian or $1599 US. And to get one with the same specs as the i7 MateBook, you have to spend $2199 Canadian or $2089 US. Those prices being accurate at the time of filming. Now keep those prices in mind as we take a closer look. The MateBook X Pro is often compared to Apple's MacBook Pro, and it's not an unfair comparison. Huawei even goes as far as calling this color space gray for goodness sake. And like that computer, it's got a solid, well-machined enclosure made out of aluminum, and there's very little flex across the bottom and top lids. When I twist it, there's a little bit of give across the enclosure, but it's hardly worth noting. The computer is slim and lightweight, weighing 1.33 kilograms or 2.93 pounds despite its large touchscreen. It's well balanced so you can open it single-handedly and its stiff hinge lets you tap away at that touchscreen without too much wobble. And now ports, time for a roll call. Along the left side, first, we've got a headphone jack, then a USB-C port and a Thunderbolt 3 port, both of which can be used for charging. Along the right side, that's a USB-A port. Noise. The legacy support doesn't stop there though. Huawei also includes a USB-C dock in the box that gives you an extra USB-A port, another USB-C port, an HDMI port, and even an old school VGA connector for that dusty old projector your work makes you use. The 13.9 inch IPS display is gorgeous. It's a 3K panel with really vibrant colors and great contrast, and it's really bright at about 450 nits with an auto brightness feature that works really well. And look at those bezels. That's a screen to body ratio of 91%. Compare that to the Dell XPS 13, which has a screen to body ratio of only 80.7%. The touchscreen has an anti-fingerprint coating, which works well, but there's no pen support, which isn't really a big deal because this is a clamshell laptop and the screen doesn't fold all the way back anyways. The aspect ratio is three to two, which regular viewers might know is my favorite aspect ratio because it means more vertical space and less scrolling. There's one flaw with the screen though, and that's glare, and there's a lot of it. Which isn't really a big deal if you like looking at yourself, and you should like looking at yourself because you're beautiful, inside and out. It's true. The keyboard is great. It's got a standard layout, keys have a good tactile feel, and the travel's short, but not too shallow at 1.22 millimeters. There's a backlight with two levels, but it does turn off after a period of inactivity, which is annoying. There's also a Windows Precision touchpad, which has smooth tracking and a good solid click. Now, if you look around online, you'll notice many users complain that the touchpad is loose. And I noticed this too. It's a real flaw, but it was the only physical flaw my unit had, and it didn't affect usability at all, so I'm willing to give it a pass. The power button in the upper right is also a fingerprint sensor. It's fast and it's accurate, and it lets you power up the laptop and log into Windows with a single button press. Now, it's no surprise with these specs, this computer is snappy. I measured an average Geekbench score of 14,029 and an average PC Mark 10 score of 3,505. The SSD is really fast too. I measured an average sequential read speed of 3,156 megabytes per second and an average sequential write of 2,034 megabytes per second. All of my detailed benchmarks can be seen in the description below. Now the i7 isn't that much faster than the i5, but it does come with that dedicated GPU and that means you can do some light gaming. But there is a catch. 
There are actually two different variants of the MX150 with different clock speeds and they're both sold as the same model. This computer has the slower variant, which means graphic benchmarks that are about 25% lower than a regular MX150, like you'd find in the Acer Aspire 5, for example. This was probably done to keep thermals manageable, but the computer still runs hot. The fan, while not especially loud or annoying, does run often, even at light loads, and at heavy loads, the keyboard's really warm, which makes gaming sessions uncomfortable. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to run my regular battery life benchmark before I had to return the review unit, but anecdotally, battery life was great. And everything I've read confirms that battery life is either average or above average for a laptop in its class. There are four speakers with Dolby Atmos branding, which means they're loud and they're clear. And I did notice some separation that you don't normally hear on laptop speakers, but it was a little bit weak in the low end. Those super thin bezels mean that Huawei had to find another place to put the webcam. And they came up with the most delightful solution by hiding the webcam under one of the keys, which is great for privacy, but the angle is awkward and it might be off-putting to some. So what about the hype? Well, the hype? The hype is real. This is an amazing little laptop. It's well-designed, it's well-built, it's got great specs, and its price makes it an amazing value. I've really only got two complaints, the hamstring GPU and the weak thermal management both of which make this laptop less than ideal for playing games. But on a computer like this, gaming's a bonus, a nice to have. What you're really getting with the MateBook X Pro is a productivity machine that can handle processor intensive tasks like heavy multitasking or video editing and do it in style with a well-built chassis and a beautiful functional display. And at prices like these, it's a definite buy. Thanks for watching another one of my reviews. If you liked it, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications. And of course, always let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.